in my own opinion, right? I believe revival is in our midst. It's in our midst. Yes. And the reason I'm saying that is the Bible says the endless expectation of creation is waiting for manifestation. See, you can't you cannot manifest what you have not been empowered for. Right? You, you cannot birth something that you are not pregnant with. Mm. <laughs> right? Revival is ready. The, the, Jesus said it. He said, the harvest field is ripe. I'm only looking for people to enter into the harvest field. So Apostle Stelman said something on Sunday that as I was like, okay. And he said, listen, the field is ripe. Every soul that will be saved, God has made provision for it. I did not saved. Somebody has not told them. Somebody yeah. has not somebody has not he says how will they hear if they don't have a preacher without a preacher right and before we start tagging oh but me i'm not a pastor i mean, i'm not an evangelist though the bible says these signs will follow they that believe and in my name i am giving them something that is reassuring something that is powerful in my name they are going to cast out demons they are going to heal the sick they're going to deliver the oppressed. They're going to do good works. In my name, we have been beclouded. Glory to God. We have been beclouded with our needs that we forget our responsibilities. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to this wonderful Instagram live session. I'm going to be bringing my guests up now without any further ado. And um, some of you may know him already because we have quite a number of mutual friends. Uh, but before he comes up, how are you doing? I trust it's been a wonderful day. It's, uh, it's a beautiful evening on this side of the world. <laughs> I'm speaking to you from Lagos, Nigeria. And though the weather has been a bit cloudy, but then we continue to live life. And so this evening, we're furthering our conversation on what really is revival. And I've had a couple of people um, discuss with me uh, on this topic. We've talked about it on the various subtopics. And last week, I had um, Damilola Afolabi, and he talked about uh, being underdogs in strange lands, right? And he shared his own experience of how he relocated to the united states and at some point in time just before covid hit he started having like a burden for prayer and he was led to lead you know these prayers every day on instagram and it lasted for over you know over like six months or eight months i guess Right, so we, we talked about all that at length, and if you want to catch up on what we said, especially if you're someone who is not in your homeland, and you find yourself in another city, in another state, another country, and you're catching burdens, right? <laughs> you may want to watch that episode just so that you know you're not alone and you can gain better perspective. So uh, Shay is here now. I'm going to bring him on board. Um, you can hear the dog barking on the background. Well, that's real. Rio, Rio is my new friend. I think he's a bit intrusive. He really wants to get into the building. But for now, we can make do with his, uh, his barking. <laughs> okay, um, Shay, you have joined. Welcome, welcome, Shay. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Yeah, clearly. Okay, so guys, this is Shay Perez. He is uh, the CEO of Bezalil. Bezalil is a fashion outfit, right? It's more than a fashion outfit. I think it, it's a whole brand and vibe all together. And she is actually more than that. Like I posted on my stage just a while ago, you cannot speak with she and be the same. Um, I think he is really an epitome of someone who whose life uh, tells you that the that we rise, we rise as we tarry. We rise as we tarry. And, and that is what I have seen with Shay. I, I, I think my encounter with Shay and my interactions with him has shown me that we exist in ranks. We exist in ranks. <laughs> because when I, when I met him, uh, the first time I met him was November 7, 2021. I just suddenly realized that there is a deep, deeper than my deep. <laughs> 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 when he 
say Jinle, Ninu is Jinle. Do you understand? Yeah. So when you just when you're thinking, okay, this is where I am and I'm deep, right? You realize that what you're standing on has another depth. So we I I I I really think we exist in ranks and we rise as we tarry. Uh you're gonna find out all of these things as we go on. So um shall you just say a word of welcome to the people as well? Because this is not really like an interrogative session, it's more like <laughs> an interactive session. Yeah, so just welcome Amazing. everybody. Thank you, thank you. I mean, um I'm wondering who Tosin is going on and on talking about right um it's it's an amazing time and i'm i'm glad to you know be part of this conversation and i believe that we're just going to have um an amazing time tonight right we're going to have an amazing time of sharing light sharing wisdom and just pressing into um depths in god and just before we start i just want everybody to be expectant for this session right because um it is not birthed by human inclination right um it is god that um, has orchestrated this and if god orchestrates a thing definitely he has something in store for you and i so don't miss your own package tonight <laughs> yeah well um, thank you so much thank you so um the conversation tonight night is about what really is revival and the anchor scripture has been judges chapter 2 and verse 10 where the bible talks about um, a generation arising or a, a new generation arose which did not uh, know the works of god and that all of the generation of joshua had died and another one rose up which did not know uh, god so what we're trying to establish is how to uh, navigate the future without destroying the past our emphasis today happens to be the faith that births revival right because if a generation exists according to judges 2 10 that does not know god because they do not know his works or because somebody did not tell them i mean she is going to tell us all about that <laughs> <laughs> right but but for whatever reason reason right this generation needs a revival right but what kind of faith is going to birth revival in the times that we are in so uh, let's let's talk about this new generation first of all Shea, how would you describe uh, what is going on today you know amongst the younger generation in 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 the light of how they perceive god and spirituality Okay, thank you. I mean, it's it's amazing that um, it's frozen. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, there are different um, perception to you know our generation, how we are being seen. There are different interpretation to who we are. But um, I beg to differ on a lot of things. I believe that our generation is actually a generation who is panting after God like never before. See, we are a generation that has come out of a lot of um, history. A lot of things have happened in the past that were new. And it has formed the fabrics of our hunger, which is now making people press into new dimensions with God. However, the honest truth is, as people who are pressing, we also have the flip side, which is people sponsoring negativities, people yeah. championing negativities. At the same time. At the same time. But um, it is not exclusive to our generation, right? The, yeah. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it says, gross darkness shall cover the earth and, and thick darkness the people. It said, but we will shine from this darkness. Right? Yeah. It, it is from this darkness, it is out of this darkness that we will find. So the presence of darkness in our generation um, does not demean our pursuits, does not demean our hunger, does not demean our passion. What we must understand is just to channel this strength aright and focus it where God wants us to focus it. Because there will be no need for light, right, if there is no darkness. Mm -hmm. there, there is no True. need for salvation if there was no sin right so don't let us focus on the red dot on the white um material right let's focus on what we are focusing on our generation i'm proud of my generation actually the 
generation of that's your generation what about the generation coming after you the truth is every generation is a build up of the past a better version whatever divide you want to dwell in so like i said there is darkness in the world right and there is light in the world now the camp that you want to pitch with right you will be a better version of it okay if you are it depends on where you stand the, the, yes so if you stand with light you will be a better version of light why because see um if we do not, not neglect ancient landmarks right and we, we do not oppose the foundations that our fathers have laid what will happen to us is that we will build on whatever they have achieved and we will achieve much more yeah. okay That's it. so i totally agree with you that yeah. we become better versions depending on where we stand depending on depending on where you stand so if i say that um today i believe that um revival revival is on the horizon uh something something is about to break out this and that we we were we, were, we, we came out of old wombs that that's what you're saying we came out of yeah. old wombs yeah. and we are meant to attain and achieve certain things however yeah. the the things that have birthed us the things that have given birth to us we must look like those things but our context is still different right so what would you say are the expressions you know of um prophecy fulfillment if if i would if i yes 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 what what would you say yeah. can describe revival today Let, let's let's even start from the beginning right okay what is revival thank you what what do we understand as revival what have we what do we actually call revival is it people just gathering in a place and you know praying in tongues? like a three-day program three-day programs revival 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 come thank you for christ <laughs> is that what we call revival revival is not a meeting but revival can break out from a meeting mm, please say that again Revival is not a meeting. <laughs> Show bars, I can see you. <laughs> revival is not a meeting, but it can break out from a meeting. The Azusa Street revival was a casual meeting that started, but the glory descended, and it became a revival that people took out tokens from that place and went to their own communities and local assembly to express this dimension that they have contacted right so it is not enough for us to have powerful meetings oh my god that preacher he blew the roof off yes thank god for what the preacher has done now the seed that is in you right the seed that is in you how how are you expressing it yeah. in my own opinion right i believe revival is in our midst it's in our midst yes and the reason i'm saying that is the bible says the earnest expectation of creation is waiting for manifestation not see, you can't you cannot manifest what you have not been empowered for mm. right you cannot birth something that you are not pregnant with mm. <laughs> right revival is ready the, the, jesus said it he said the harvest field is ripe i'm only looking for people to enter into the harvest field you know apostle Stelman said something on sunday that as i was like okay and he said, listen, the field is right. Every soul that will be saved, God has made provision for it. Why are they not saved? Somebody has not told them. Somebody yeah. has not. Somebody has not. He says, how will they hear if they don't have a preacher? Without a preacher. Right? And before we start tagging, oh, 
But me, I'm not a pastor. Ah, me, I'm not an evangelist, though. The Bible says, these signs will follow. They that believe. And, and in my name, I am giving them something that is reassuring. Something that is powerful. In my name. They are going to cast out demons. They are going to heal the sick. They are going to deliver the oppressed. They are going to do good works. In my name. We have been beclouded. Glory to God. We have been beclouded with our needs that we forget our responsibilities. With our needs, right? With our needs, yes. We have we are so much engrossed with our personal needs that we neglect our responsibilities. We neglect our assignments. It's like it's like the ambassador of a nation, right? Who is being represented in another nation, maybe the ambassador of um um the, the United States in Nigeria. All of a sudden the ambassador says, you know what? <laughs> you know, like this Yoruba saying that says um one road does not lead to the market. On a call water. On a call water, right? And say, yes. you know what? I might be the ambassador of US to Nigeria, but you know what? Let me just open a mini store so that daily income will be coming in. Mm. No, no, what see your provision is in your assignment. Mm. So, so God, the, the home country would always see to it that your needs are met so far you are in line with what they have sent you to do. To do. Do you understand? So we need to manifest. Miracles are good. Our needs being met are fantastic. But the truth is we need to move beyond miracles and move to the realms of glory. And what do I mean by moving to the realms of glory? As he is, so am I. The Bible says in John 17, it says the glory that you are, you know, given me, I give to them. Can you hear me clearly? The, the glory that you are given to me, the glory of, of Christ, the glory of Jesus, 100% humanity, 100% uh, divinity. He says, the glory that, that you have given to me, Father, I give it to them. Yeah. So that means I am an embodiment of the glory of Christ. So why am I not manifesting? There are prophecies that have gone ahead. Speaking, especially for our nation, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Speaking. Different prophecies have gone out. But let me tell you, prophecies don't self-fulfill. They need participators. I'll say that again. Prophecies don't self-fulfill. Somebody needs to carry that burden and say, you know what? It has been prophesied that Nigeria is going to have a new name and the new name is going to be a new name known for strength and this and that devoid of corruption and all yeah now can we take that prophecy and take it into the place of prayer and download strategies how can we implement this because us, you know, those, the truth is, um, revival is first of all personal. Yes. Before it becomes communal. The fire that I carry, I experience it first, right? Then yes. Then it is being translated into my communities, not just by evangelism, but by institutionalizing the concepts and the ideas that God has given me. What we lack in, in, in most countries is we don't institutionalize our revelation. We don't, permit me to use this one, we don't conceptualize the, the, the revelations that we have. Yes. To, 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 make, it, to make it relatable, to make uh, it really usable. Relatable. Yeah, to make it, and, and and even irresistible. Yes, 
Because, see, we will not take over for God from the corners of our church. You are the light of the world, not the light of the church. We will not take over systems and institutions from the corners of your room. Doing no, 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 no. We pray, right? But what are the strategies to take to the market? And I'm not demeaning prayer. If you know me, you will know that I am someone who is given to prayer. Yes. Right? But what have you brought back from the from your secret place? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> what is this? Kill my, my, my pastor back then. My pastor back then used to say something. He said, Can you do that? Can you lie? Can you lie? Can you lie? I think that's what I was using looking for. Can you lie? Like, can you lie? Can you lie? Is that funny? When you pray, download concepts. God bless, you know, God bless Pastor Kojo Yamadi because he taught me this, um, this side of prayer. Sit down and pray in the Holy Ghost with your pen and your paper in your hands. And focus on that thing. If it's Nigeria you are praying for, right? Set aside like three hours. And have Nigeria at the back of your mind when praying. Visualize Nigeria and begin to pray. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Concepts and ideas begin to drop in your heart as regards the matter. How did you think that Daniel prayed the prayer when he needed to, to download what God, what um, the dream that the king had? See, Christians, we cannot be shouting about the Daniel mantle and shouting about the Esteric mantle and shouting about the Joseph anointing if it will end with dreams and revelations alone we need to bring it we need to refine it and take it into the marketplace the bible makes us to understand it says there is no need to prophesy in tongues if you don't have an interpreter the truth of the matter is a lot of people are speaking in vocabularies that their generations don't understand and I'm not talking about English. No, no, no. I'm talking about the expressions that they are given. People don't understand it. People can't relate with it. So we need to, we need to um, break these things down. Our pastors are doing a fantastic job, right? But we need to see. The way a message will be interpreted to me is different from what it will be interpreted to you. Because we have different assignments, right? We have different pulpits that we need to go and express these things. As a marketplace player, how can people see God in you? How will they see that, oh, this person carries Christ? <laughs> the the this Disciples in Antioch, when they saw them, they said, these ones are Christ-like. They were not shouting, what about this? No. No, that's not what they were doing. They exhibited Christ. The fruit of the Spirit was there. And also the gifts of the Spirit. So much so that people said, uh -uh, I have seen this pattern before. And I, I think it's Christ. These people look like Christ. The question is, do you look like Christ? Do you look like Christ? Do you look like Christ? And there's a song um, I fell in love with recently. Somebody was taking a meeting and the song broke out. It says, please don't stop till I look just like you. Don't stop. Holy Ghost, don't stop. Till I look... Till People see me and see you. Yeah. Revival is actually in our midst, but we need to manifest it. 
Wow. That's that's so powerful. So you said some things and I've been taking mental notes. First of all, you said that we cannot give birth to what we're not pregnant with, right? I'm, I'm going to come to it. And then you also said that um, prophecies don't self-fulfill. They need participators. And th there was a point where you said you can carry a prophecy and it literally just stays with you. Yes. And that is actually where we're going to pitch the tent of, of this conversation. And then, But I just want to comment a bit about the, the point on being like Christ. Um, one morning I woke up and I had this strong impression because I had been carrying all the burden of revival, revival. Like maybe I went to bed nights before with my head full, you know, of certain documentaries or things that I've read. And, and I just woke up and I had that knowing just came like the revival hasn't started because those who should, you know, uh, those who should embody it, those, the conduits are not yet, have not fully come into maturity. And if if um, if there's anybody on this call, of course I know she goes to Koinonia. There's anybody else who has been following Apostle Selman's messages lately, right? I think about two weeks ago, or so he talked about um, why revival still tarries. At the, he was talking about transformation, the need for transformation, and having the victory mindset. And he, he talked about the needed transformation for the soul. So, like she has said, a lot of us really need to look like Christ. Um, it's not just okay for you to be self-aware. You know, self-awareness is key, right? But there is there is just an extent to which science will go in terms of helping you define yourself. Your true identity is in Christ. And you need to constantly, like daily, you know, make all the necessary efforts with the help of the Holy Spirit to actually become that identity. Do you understand? What I'm trying to say in essence is that it's not just okay that science says you're phlegmatic or you're choleric or you're sanguine and everything like that. Things that they tell you have strengths and weaknesses, right? But then you realize that some of the things that are strengths or which you find useful uh, in certain contexts are actually not Christ-like. Do you understand? And yet we carry the burden for revival. We say that, you know, we, we want to birth revival. But yet, you know, there are certain things that still need transformation in our lives. And th there's also work to be done. There's spiritual labor to be done, right? So I think we'll just move into that. Uh, but before then, this thing about being pregnant, birthing uh, what you're pregnant with, right? How would you describe the, the pregnancy, the, the revival pregnancy of today? Like, what does it look like? What, what's really going on? It's simple. Wherever there is a need, a calling, there is it, it's a place for revival. Let me give an example. The Bible says, and the cry of the children of Israel rose up to God while they were in captivity in Israel. Then God went ahead and gave Moses an encounter, right? And when he had that encounter, he was sent. To the children of israel to be their deliverer right when we get dissatisfied hmm, something will break we start calling yes we start yearning yes when like i said earlier on revival is first personal yeah you know? In the business world, they call something the MVP, right? Okay. The, the minimum viable product. That is, okay. if you want to do something big, don't just, just start it big. Start it, you know, do, do a smaller unit of it to test the market so that with that, you can, you know, test your variables and the likes. Now, mm -hmm. the way revival is breathed in your life, is the same way it will translate into the larger circle, which is the community. So how does it start? It starts with an encounter. An encounter which might be birthed by a realization of our shortcomings. A realization that I need more. A realization that this cannot be it. Then I begin to cry and yearn for another measure. And, and, yes. I, and I do it systematically. systematically. I do it intelligently. Yes. yes. 
So once you follow that protocol, a switch begins. Once you follow that pathway, a switch will begin. The Bible says, as soon as Zion travail, shall a nation be burned in a At day. One. Hey, Kappa, yeah. uh, based on the intelligence of man and based on logic, based on science, this is an impossibility. But there is an agency that you can subscribe to in the spirit. There is, there is a technology that you can subscribe to in the spirit that can make you birth that which cannot be done in a day. It says, as soon as you travail, you bring forth. As soon... Okay. I, I, I love this preacher. I, I was listening to a preacher and, and the preacher said, as soon as Zion travailed, Zion prevailed. Wow. wow. As see when we come to that point where we are dissatisfied and we cannot take it any longer it's um Esau's father told him he said i've given all the blessings to your to your brother he said but something is remaining when you become restless when you become restless you will break the burdens off your shoulders see this birth things that we are pressing for what we need is it, it will not it will not come to fruition if we are still comfortable when we get, get restless when we get to that space when, when we get to that space where we, we're saying i'm not comfortable with being comfortable anymore this yeah. space is too tight for me and my children we need mm. a larger space i need a larger expression I want a greater grace. Can you, Father, what, what is needed for me to enter this realm? Then, you, enter, you break into it. It's, it's the same protocol that, is, that we engage even in business. It gets to a time, what you have been doing for a long time becomes a routine. And you're just like, you know what? I, I, I'm done with this routine. There must be something new. You know, Pastor Paul just said this on Sunday, you know, Sunday morning is Sunday morning um, message. And he said, a lot of people do not move into new faces of their life and of their organization and of their country because they just stay at a level. They don't pivot into another realm. You have been doing it the same way. And if you yeah. have been doing it the same way and you are satisfied with the result you are getting, we will remain at status quo. Mm. Let me give us an example. Church is being done differently in Nigeria today because of COVID. I tell you, something had to shake us. There was a shaking. There was a switch. And people rea suddenly realized, see, I know a lot of people that their Christian walk got better during COVID. And it was not because of fear. It's just because yes. they know that what I have is not sufficient enough to move me to where I want to get to. And another approach was made available. Yes. So people started knowing God for themselves. So my pastor's message and the books that I've been reading, they were just like textbooks to guide my journey. Yeah. But the relationship is with the Holy Spirit. We started seeing people doing prayer movements, waiting on the Lord, downloading stuff. See, we need to move to greater realms of expressing the, the, the manifold wisdom of God. If you go and read the book of Ephesians, I think it's in Ephesians 2, there about, 2, 8, there about, there. It says that the church, no, is Ephesians 1. The church is to, you know, um, bring forth the manifold wisdom of God. They are supposed to see it with us. We are not the non-entities of the world. You are the light of the world is what the Bible says. Not the outcast. 
Light, 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 light is what the Bible says. Light. So my passion, my drive is to stir up the gift of God that is within me so as to express the light that he has deposited in me. See, let me tell us something. You will not become the light. That's why I said revival is in our midst. You will not become the light. It says you, you are the light. Are the light. So, what should light do? Shine. Shine. And where is the relevance of light? In darkness. In the darkness, yes. So, which dark spot have you spotted? I tell you. I tell you. Is it the end? I tell you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Which? Where is the dark area? I, I want tell to you. Life? I have an assignment in my. This is my assignment in my life. Bringing out the beauty in people. Right. Right. It helps me approach my business. I run a fashion brand right i bring up the beauty in people when i have the opportunities opportunity to speak to people i use my words to bring out the beauty in people right when i have um the opportunity to do good to people it's not because i want to show myself and say um, and make people know that oh i can do this thing no it's so that the beauty in my neighbor can be brought out what is that dark spot that you are lightening up where apart from what where what is the geographical location for your assignment that is how we will bet revival there is a story you can check it up on google the amolonga revival amolonga this revival broke forth you know it started with evangelism and it started evangelizing you know, in that territory, back to back, back to back, they were praying, they were evangelizing. They were praying, they were evangelizing. And the, 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 the area was notorious for drinking, revelry, a lot of vices. But these people kept at it. Then guess what? One by one, the bars began that to close down. Enough. They started closing down one after the other. Not only that, people started gathering in churches again. Some of those bars were turned into churches. Yes. Then it did not stop there. That's where I'm going. It didn't stop there. They noticed that their agricultural produce became bigger than anyone in that territory their carrots were as big as a tuba of yam really yes and they traced it back to the time that you know revival the prayers and the yes converting to the because to the that, that is what repentance does it, it just it just pulls on god the bible says and it transcends everything exalts exalt the nation. nation and sin is reproach sin is a reproach so if a people come together and their soul is revived it will translate into the works of their hands Blessed is the man, someone, who walks not, who, who sits not, who stands not. He will be. Like a it tree. is first of all internal. Mm. Then what the work that has been the, the work of transformation that has been done on the inside and begins to itself, have out. It will be like a tree that is planted. Not a tree that is strolling, it's planted. <laughs> Or hopping. <laughs> or, or it is planted. Planted by the rivers of water. And it didn't say it will be like a weed. Planted by the rivers. It didn't say it will be like grass. Planted by the rivers. It said this one is a tree. It's a, a tree 
it has roots it has stems it has branches that means it, has it will grow so big it will have fruits it will grow so big that other people can have expression under it that, that is revival people of god oh we are shouting revival and we don't love ourselves we have now started we are shouting revival and i can't stand my neighbor you gossip about people you smile at them in front of them and you backstab them behind them you can't best revival that way for god is love. god is love there is no revival without love because love is the vehicle that burdens are transported in yeah if you don't love a territory god cannot put the burden of that territory in your heart you are mm. you are in the us you are in the uk and you are all you are after is let me just make some cool you know dollars or you're in <laughs> love is the vehicle Go and read about people, even in the business world. Go and read how Adidas started. Go and read about all this. They just saw a need that ah, people are not wearing this kind of shoes. Okay, I need to, I need to um, um, create a solution. And boom, they did. The ideas that God is giving you, it's yeah. not just for the pulpit. You need see God can give you ideas that will reshape the course of history. And let me tell us something, you know, just before I advance to the truth of the matter is if we, we do not conceptualize our ideas, uh -huh. those people who do will control our narrative. Whether they are Christians or not. Whether they are Christians or not. <laughs> I'll say it again if we do not conceptualize our ideas and revelations the people who have taken the time to conceptualize their own they will be our leaders they will rule over yes. us yes. whether they are believers or not because man has been given the dominion mandate so let man me, like let me ask you, humanity we are on instagram today i didn't like if instagram shuts down any live broadcast and says anywhere you are mentioning jesus on your life we will shut it down and your account will be suspended what will you do you, you protest no discrimination against christians yes it is discrimination but which products do you have to solve that problem yes. i'm not saying we should have because another interpretation that someone might give today is, is oh let us have christian platforms that is only no we're not saying we should have christian platforms we are saying <laughs> let us have platforms that can serve the world controlled by kingdom-minded people and that, providing better services that is how we can take over the world now we have books that um yes we have books that the gay world are sponsoring right gay bc and they're giving it to our children we have cartoons on netflix and youtube that they have you know in a clandestine way mixed messages that are not good for our children but all we do is no don't wear long skirts don't wear weaver the until we conceptualize <laughs> our ideas, they will rule us. Yeah. That's it. So that, that seems to be highlighted one more time. And, and I, I think it goes a long way to, to let the people know that it is uh, very important. Okay. So we're gradually um, entering into the main subjects, but I believe that what we've said already, you know, just makes it easy. So we would wrap up soon. Um, You've talked about how you can have a prophecy and it eventually just stays with you. 
and, and it ends there. So if we have people who are hungry for God and want to be his um, conduits, right, in Brazilian revival and all of that, definitely they would need to, first of all, believe whatever God has said concerning them and then start to work it out. But what I see here is that many people just have an idea, right, that God wants to do great things with them. But they're just unable to either fully grasp what that thing is or the how of getting there. So if, if we look at the story of the 12 spies in um, the book of Numbers 13 and 14, we realize that 12 people went out, but it looks like prophecy died with 10 people who did not see the possibility of overcoming the giants. So I will leave you to just expound on it. But when I, when I saw this, I was like, man, these are people at the verge of a revival. Because truly, Israelites were coming out of captivity, right? They had crossed Jordan and they saw revival right ahead of them which was Canaan, like, let's take this land. And then God gives them, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm like, why did God even send them out to go and check in the first place? If he, I mean, if he knew that he wanted to take the giants down on their behalf, but he still sent them out, which means that sometimes God gives us assignments and then he steps back and he's just watching. And sometimes it's like, you're even asking, you're asking, whatever, but he has already given you the vision. He has already given you the scripture. And he's just stepped, stepped back and he's just like watching right and then two people going out and then one of them saying sorry excuse me what's happening i must speak this word today so caleb is saying no oh, guys let's let's go we can take it and i believe that joshua and caleb had that testimony because of something that moses had said about god in the past for instance in exodus they had seen the same god who led them through what's it called the red sea and the, the other 10 guys still said no. And then Joshua still countered it again and said, because their power has been stripped from them, the giants don't have power, right? So it, it also shows that there are times when God gives you an assignment and it looks, they, those assignments look like giants and they are almost insurmountable. So Shay, I'll just leave you to, you know, walk us through, you know, this whole thing. If God gives an assignment, and I mean an assignment, for instance, I, I went for a birthday today, and this lady is a chef. She's someone you probably also know. And she's a chef. And most of the time, when I just think about her, and I'm like, ah, people will just joke and say, ah, this girl, she can cook, eh? She can cook for Africa. And that is just like a colloquial, like something we just say, cook for Africa. But do you know that literally it can happen? That that, that can be God's mandate on a human being. Why? Because I've, I've seen history. Billy Graham was called america's pastor how does someone pastor a nation it's the same way someone can feed a nation yeah, yeah. it's the same way many uh women in history have done a lot of tremendous things i mean there's a lady called hida skuda she went all over india with a medical practice healing people and stripping them of you know all their sentiments and um, bias, religious dogma, and all those things, and just reshaping their paradigm and delivering them, you know, out of that captivity. And she went around India. So when we say she can talk for Africa, or she can eat for Africa, or she can, no, it sounds well, whatever it is, whatever it is, some dreams can be that big. So what, what, what do we do when it looks like we have an assignment, we're standing right in front of Canaan, right? God has shown this thing and he, he wants us to see the way he sees what do we do because it's possible yeah, that, that, prophecy, that prophecy can actually die with us because god killed the 10 and i'm wondering Shay, why would god kill the 10. <laughs> you know the honest truth right you you just, just answer the question yourself god they are supposed to see the way god sees you left captivity of 430 years you were rejoicing pharaoh that almost killed you willingly released his gold to you two million or three million of you on the walk out of egypt then you got to red sea and 
he was like, ah, Moses, let's go back. This is nonsense. Did you, did you see the deliverance that happened in Egypt? The 10 plagues? Did you think that that was African magic? Or did you think that was just a movie? If God delivered you from that one, don't you think that this one is a small matter before him? Then superstar Moses had to go to God. God, how far? What's going on? God said, ha, Oga, are you forgetting yourself? Right? I gave you a rod now. Remember when I commissioned you, there was something I told you to use. I told you to use your rod. Then, Red Sea parted. I'm taking us on a journey for us to see something. Red Sea parted. Hey, there is no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Then they went through Red Sea. Then they saw the Egyptians behind them. And they saw the river closed up on the Egyptians. My God is a good God. What God cannot do does not exist. Right? And they were going again. They were oscillating and vacillating between, hey, God, oh, you want to kill us? And, wow, we serve a big God. Now, it's now time for them to spy their promised land. And it happens to you and I also. There is something that God has told you and I to do. But it gives us an inkling into it. And we're like, never, it's not possible. God needs you and I to see the way he sees. What did Joshua and Caleb see? They saw giants, obviously. All of they saw the same thing, but interpreted it different ways. That brings me to what you said earlier, that there is a need for mind transformation. Our mind needs to be renewed into the frequency of God. God, what are you saying about this thing? Lazarus was dead. Jesus said he was sleeping. Because he knew that we are going to wake this one up. How far can you see? I think that was the difference between Joshua and Caleb and the other ten. What you see determines what you enter into. Do you see that there will be a breaking forth or you see that, that this challenge is going to swallow you up? See, we cannot breast revival on the verge of negativity. We cannot breast revival on the premise of I don't know what God is going to do. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 12 says something very profound. It says the seeing eyes and the hearing ears belongs to God. So that dimension that we need to enter into is based on how far our eyes can see. It took Abraham and said, Abraham, how far can you see? Kalabra Shadabaya. How far can you see? You are talking about someone cooking for Africa. That might be the assignment. When they will mention Africa's number one chef, and it will be a name. The truth of the matter is, let me tell you this. God communicates with us in a frequency. But your receptor, which is your mind, determines what you will get. Let me break it down further. Um, Nigeria is on 5G. I mean, a lot of telecommunication companies are, you know, installing 5Gs and you can, you know, uh, subscribe to their 5G, you know, um, network services. But the truth is, if your phone is 3G, you can connect to 5G. And there are some things you are able to do on 5G seamlessly that you are not able to access on 3G. 
let's break it down further. 3310. We all know that uh, that phone. If you place an iPhone 14 and it's 3310 today, the truth is they are both mobile phones. Right? But what they can do is different based on capacity that has been programmed into them. There is a programming on your inside that you need to awaken for you to be able to access the promised land. Guess what um, the Bible says? It says, Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is on your inside that has been placed upon the plane of hands of the pedestry. Of the presbytery. Right? It has come over you. It, it's on you. But it will not work until you stay it up. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it it's day and night. It's like Amatem. You use one in the morning, one at night. <laughs> do you understand? That is what we are supposed to do. I mean, I don't know. The reason is, I really believe, right, that it was their faithlessness that deprived them of entry into the promised land. There is a table that has been prepared for you and I. But until we go there, we will not partake of it. Until we come into an awareness that God has prepared something for me. God has something prepared for me. Then you don't even stop at God has prepared something for me. You move to the other level. Okay, God, what exactly have you prepared for me? Then it begins to tell you, it begins to show you by my stripes, you have been made whole, right? I, I have a good plan for you, a plan of good and not of evil, to give you the future that you hope for. Romans 8, uh, verse 28, it says, all things will work together for your good. Those are the things that have been prepared. So when I see something contrary coming, I go to those things that have been prepared. Yeah. And, and I eat it. That is the way to do this thing. We are not saying we are perfect. We are all learning, right? We are all on this journey. But see, if we will come into the fullness of what God has for us, our believing is important. What do you see? Who do you believe? Do you know that the same thing happened to David? A giant was in front of him. The... I don't know the confidence that David had. In. That time he was playing his guitar, you know, his strings in the in the wilderness and fellowshipping with God must have must have been. Oh, Bill Johnson said something. He said, "You look like who you worship. Mm. You look like who you worship." That means means those times that david was playing the strings and just worshiping god and just doing his things god was rubbing off on him he was seeing dimensions of god that when he saw goliath he was like ah, go is it you you are coming down it's not even a debate you are I'm I'm the giant you are the grasshopper understand? i'm not even this one is not because faith talk is different from, from motivation or inspiration Oh, I believe I'm blessed. It's good. But do you really believe you are blessed? It must take over you. Now, see, it will show in your conversation. Oh, Phil in Nigeria has become 617. What's your next response? Hey, they will suffocate us. Mm -mm. No, not me. I need a med. Let the fuck Let the <laughs> No, they will do this. No, 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 no. I might not like what is going on. I might not, I might not, I might not like what is going on, but listen to me. My I function from heaven's economy. I will pray for my nation. I will intercede for my nation that our leaders are directed aright and they and they and, and they uh, deploy the wisdom of God into everything they are doing and God guides their step. But hey, it's not going to affect me. Even in the midst of all this, I will rise. I will 
your eyes. See, be a Christian. I'm telling you, people of God, be a Christian. And it's not about uh, church activities. Or titles. Or titles. It is being Christ-like. They met Jesus on the way and said, Oh, God, you are not better. It was an embarrassing situation. It's like FIR is coming to your company and saying, You have not paid. It's an embarrassing situation. He said, Calm down. Calm down. Um, Peter, go to the fish. Precision. Go to the river. The first fish you, you, you catch, there's a gold coin. On the, there is an economy I function with. Do you understand? That's yeah. the mindset that sh these were the mindsets that bested revivals of old. Our Bishop Benson in Daosa saw a scripture that you will you will raise the dead. He took his small Bible and was roaming around Bini City looking for a dead person until he found one. That's what I, I, I read about. That I read about this man, um, ah, Casey Price. Casey Price said, I took the book of Catherine Coleman that says God can do it again. And I devoured that book. And, and it bested a new wave of grace over my life and ministry. Do you understand what we are saying? See, God is still in the habit of using people. Yeah. In, it still needs people to be used. But you and I must be ready. Our hunger, we must see the way he sees. I don't know whether you remember back in the years, there, there are prayers we used to pray. Help me to see the way you see. A, a generation you are not compassionate to or for, you cannot affect. Mm. No, you can't. Somebody said, Give me Scotland or I die. What we are saying, what some people are saying in our generation is, Give me dollars or I die. Help me, Jack Bauer, or I die. <laughs> give me that, give me that car or I die. Give, give me that marriage or I die. But God is saying, There is more. Is this six words the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you? And I want to encourage somebody tonight that the truth of the matter is God is not saying, I, I, I don't want to take care of your needs. He's concerned about your needs. But when you make your needs your priority, you, you lose the essence of your fellowship with God. You lose the quality. Let me give us a story. I think 2019, there was a song that was popular. 2019, 2020, there about. Give me you. Everything else can wait. I, I, I hope I'm not too late or something. I do not sing that song for a long time. I, I say, ah, God, give me you and let every other thing come with you. <laughs> 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 I knew that. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm serious. I'm you I thought you were going to say that. Yeah. You already gave me you, which is which, which is which is also which is also theologically or doctrinally cool. Yeah. But the part of <laughs> give me you, I don't know that come with you. I That's God. so new to me. I, right know, now. I, I, I didn't see that song that we at all. <laughs> there were two songs like that. Give me you. Everything else can wait. And this other song that says, No, is the was there a song or a prayer that God, if you don't do anything else in my life, is okay? Allah, ah, God, you will do. Ah, Jonathan, <laughs> because at that point in time, my, my knowledge was not as strong to accommodate those things. I still needed to see and taste of dimensions in God. The goodness of God leads to repentance. That's what the word of the Lord says, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So God is not afraid 
of giving you whatever you want him to give you. Mm. But my point tonight is that is not the end game. Yeah. It's not the end. Your, your need is not the end game. That beautiful marriage that is on your prayer list, he will give you and for some people before the end of this year. Amen. Do you understand? But that's not the end game. What is the purpose? How mm. will Jesus be revealed and glorified with that which he has given you? Oh, I want to be making 10 million naira per month. Absolutely wonderful. How is Jesus glorified? Mm. How is Jesus revealed? Because the children of this world, when they make their money, they glorify mammon. Right? That's why you say, oh, oh so so and so club shut down because so so and so person armored. They are servicing something. But you as a believer, you say, no, Pastor, but we should not be giving. Not be giving offering. Not be giving. No. The truth is, whatever God has given you and I, when God meets our needs, there is there is an end in mind. That's not the end. Is giving us so that we can fulfill assignment, so that we can we fulfilling purpose can be easier for us. Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so so much. You delved deeply into it, and I'm sure that anybody listening right now or watching even from the archive, right, would draw inspiration and encouragement. Because for me, I think that the faith that brings revival is just that faith that does the next thing in that assignment, the next step towards the fulfillment of that assignment. So for instance, you know, because I try to visualize, for instance, if God says, I am building for you a nation of all secondary schools in Africa and Asia. It's eye-falloutin. But do you know that there is a policy that UN can release that brings that prophecy into manifestation and tangibility for you? But it yeah. actually just begins with that first letter of, of request to say kiniko kiniko to the secondary school down the road yes so we're in the generation now that what world all the worlds have been broken i mean in 2018 or early 2000s thereabout if someone said said to you i can give you a nation you wouldn't believe it you'll be wondering how but after covid came and all the worlds broke down even churches started naming themselves nation do you understand? So, for Joshua and Caleb, there was nothing called impossibility. Let me, let, let me even, like, let, let me tell you how I know. The giants that Caleb and Joshua just said, we can take them at once. It was a lie. If you go back to Exodus, God had already told Moses and said, when you get into the land, you will not take it in one year. I will have to use hornets to drive them out bit by bit, by bit. so that animals will not come to eat you guys up. So, Kimi, Joshua, Kimi, Caleb, why did they say we can take them at once? How? So, it's it's just about being, being crazy enough. And like you said, yeah. seeing the way God sees. Because one thing I realize God hates is that vocabulary of unable we are, yeah yeah unable you understand because, because, you know that do you know yeah. that that thing that you said right uh, about um joshua and caleb saying that they can take it at once it's not actually a lie but the strategy to taking it they didn't need download needed to be downloaded but for god them they were already in the mind of god it. like that that was what god needed do you understand? Because God, God knew that, that, oh, with this, with these two guys, yes, yeah. with these two guys, I am cool. You understand? 
and th that was what you also touched on that it is in, in god's assignment is his provision is there so the long life that they even needed to actualize it god made sure he gave it to them yeah in any for the ones who won't see god's assignment or even perceive the possibility of his assignments god literally has no use for them God annihilated those same guys. It, that thing fear me, see? I don't go lie. Because when you just leave them, je, je, for he, he knew that that would become toxic. Do you understand? To the entire to the entire crop of people. So what what I'm what I'm just saying is it always begins with the next, just the very next step. When you're speaking of Catherine Coleman and you know, I, I look at a story of how they got to a dead end when a brother-in-law who had influenced their life so much, you know, and um, that marriage to her sister was already crumbling. Their ministry was already falling apart and they had gotten to the end of the road. Do you get? And in, in that book, um, um, Jamie, Bre Jamie Buckingham recorded that he, Madame didn't know what to do. She could either journey with them or stay back in the city where they had just done the, the most recent tent meeting and just in staying back with her friend Helen Gulliford just in staying back somebody approached them with a dead church can you hear me is it my network or yours I think it's your network now okay so I, I'm sure I need to be sure okay it's Shay's next up you're looking blurry right now from my system and you may have to just check okay good so how do we wrap this up let's pray Final word from you yeah you know as we as we spoke um i just felt a stirring that we should um pray right um there is something god wants to do in our generation the fathers are handing over the buttons. May it not slip from our hand. Amen. The fathers have done great works. They are in a, a time of transition where they, they are pulling off the cloak and putting it on the Elishas. Hey. They are dropping the rods and being carried by angels and the Joshua's are being commissioned. They are giving instructions to their disciples to wait for the empowerment so that they can go into the world as spread. If our consecration is not right, if our art is not right, if our motives are not right, we will miss the move. We will, we will, we will, we will, we will turn it into another human agenda. We will turn it into another basic thing. But if, if we can align our heart and say, Father, that which you want to do in the world, do it in me listen to this people. this is the prayer whatever you want to do in the world whatever you want to do in my territory whatever you want to do in the media world in the in the medical world do in me first and then do through, through me me do it in me so that i have a first hand experience then do it amen that you are Amen. praying just use the fire emoji just put it up as we pray that in the name of jesus that which you want to do in my world do through me may i be a worthy vessel a worthy container of god to transport your glory to carry your glory into territories I receive the empowerment. I receive fresh fire. Help me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we are available. 
use us and whatever does not look like you father that will hinder this move take it away oh god amen and make us worthy vessels and let your glory be revealed in and through us amen in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen and amen Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Shay. Thanks Guys, I told me. you. I said you cannot speak with Shay and still be the same. Every every at every juncture, it was just as if we, we were getting started. But we have to go. So you can connect with Shay. His handle is there on my post. Uh Perez Ulua Shay. Please connect with him if uh what he has said resonates with you and i look forward to bringing him again this time around maybe a three-way conversation or two-way conversation you know just talking about collaborators you know the, the gift of collaboration in this season yeah. why uh, god brings us together in a form of yeah. web of network and um you know all, all that is it, it's it's meant to mean in terms of encouragement in in terms of um, fulfillment of assignment etc etc so maybe we can have three of us talk about this but for tonight huh, i'm definitely going to watch this again and cut out some clips from it because it has been a rich session and i pray that you know um, your voice will continue to be amplified Amen. and your um, level and sphere of influence will Amen. continue to expand Amen. in the name of jesus Thank you very much for coming, guys. I cannot Thank add you. to what she has said. So both of us are leaving this live session <laughs> together. God bless you. By the way, she has an amazing wife. She's also very active <laughs> on social media. She has a YouTube page. Both of them are really firebrands. So my regards to your lovely wife. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.